in a previous tutorial, I believe from a previous chapter, maybe a week or two ago, I talked about clipping groups. And I want to go into those more in depth with you right now. So I'm going to show you how to lay out a quick poster design. I'm going to go to File and Open. I'm in Chapter 7, Folder Number 5, and I want to open up Nature Center Poster. Okay, this is the background for our little advertisement to get people to come to the Nature Center. What I want to do is show people some of the wildlife they would encounter when coming to the Nature Center. So I'm going to go to File and Open, and I'm going to open up the Butterfly. And they go to the Nature Center, they can see some butterflies. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on this, and I'm going to take my elliptical marquee. And here's the worst thing you can do. I'm going to hold Shift, drag a little circle around the butterfly. Then I switch to my Move tool to literally move it out of this photo, drag it up, drop it in. Any guesses why that's bad? Well, if you look closely, if you zoom in, notice I clipped off the tips of the wings. That's a really bad idea if you're promoting nature. You don't want to damage the wildlife. So the problem is if I clipped off the tips of the wings and my boss comes in and says, hey, what are you doing? We need the wings. I can't add the wings back in. I have to delete what I've done and start all over again. Okay, come back to the butterfly, command D to deselect, start again with my elliptical, and now I'll just hold shift and drag a really big circle to make absolutely sure I do not clip off anything on the butterfly. But now the problem is when I go to my move tool and I move that up and drop it in here, the photo is too big for that space. So now I have to hit Command T, shrink it down so it fits in that space, hit return. And now my boss walks in and says, I like it, but the butterfly is too small. Can we make the butterfly bigger? Well, no, because if I make the butterfly bigger, I have to make this entire circle bigger and then it won't fit in the space. So I backed myself into a corner again. Got to delete and start all over again. I'm doing it the stupid way. Okay, you don't want to do that. You don't want to ever delete any pixels. So I'm going to go back to the butterfly photo and hit Command D. Okay, what I need to do is bring in the entire photo, not just the butterfly. But this entire photo is pretty much the size of this scene right here. Okay, how do I isolate one part of the photo in that little space? So what I'm going to use is a clipping group. Okay, in order to do that, I'm going to pull the bottom edge of my layers panel down, and I'm going to make one brand new layer by clicking on the little plus. In fact, I'll hide these other panels so we get some room over here. Okay, I'm going to click the plus, double click the name, and I will call that photo one and I'll hit return. Okay, what I'm gonna do is go to my elliptical marquee, hold my shift key for a circle, and I want my photo to be about that big, right in that space right there. Okay, what I'm gonna do is fill that area with white. So I'm gonna hit D for default colors, X to switch to white, and on this photo one layer, option key and the big delete key. I'm going to put a marker. That's telling me basically where I want my photo to go and about how big I want that photo to be. Okay, the next step is really important. When you're done with that, command D. You're going to deselect it. You're done with that area. Then I want two more photos down here. So I'm going to start on the bottom layer again, my background. Click the plus, add another brand new layer. I can double click the name. And that one is going to be photo two. Hit return. 
Now I hold shift key. And again, before I do that, command D. Make sure this first one is D selected. Now I hold shift and I'll drag a big circle right here. Let go of my mouse first. Then I let go of the shift key and I can move that into position right there. I've got a brand new layer for photo two. Same shade of white. Option and delete. And again, Command D when you're done. D select. Okay. Start on the bottom layer one more time. Create another brand new layer. I can double click the name and call that photo three. Got to hit return or enter to accept the name. Command D to deselect the previous circle. That is the most important thing. Now when I hold shift, I'll do kind of a medium sized circle right here. Move that into place. On my brand new layer, option and delete. Command D to deselect. Okay, if I don't like where any of these landed, I can always go to my move tool and just kind of move it over, bump it down a little bit, whatever I want to do. But I put those in their proper order. Okay, the visual test to make sure you did this right. Each circle should be on its own layer. So there's photo one, there's photo two, and there's photo three. Okay, I'm gonna start on photo one, this little circle up here. Like I said before, you're gonna take the entire photograph. I'm gonna take my move tool, put it on the butterfly, drag the whole photo up, wait a second, drop it back in. Okay, I'm going to land that butterfly right where that white circle was, right about there. And I'm going to create a clipping group. So on the line that separates the butterfly photo from the little white circle, I'm going to hover over this line and hold my Option key, but do not press down on the mouse. Hold your Option key and just move your mouse up and down like this. Don't press. Because if you hold option key and you press, you're gonna make a copy of your butterfly. So you don't wanna do that. Okay, hover over the line, hold your option key and just move your mouse. And then when you see the clipping group icon, the little box with the down pointing arrow like I've got right here, hold option key and click. And you will trap the top layer inside the boundaries of the white circle layer below it. Okay, what's nice about that is I can still move this photo. I didn't clip off anything. I can hit Command T and resize it a little bit. I can go outside and rotate it a little bit. Whatever I want to do. But I've trapped the butterfly. I have not damaged the butterfly. So I'll hit return, zoom in on that, and there's our wildlife contained within the circle, not damaged within the circle. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. Start on photo two. If you're not sure which one that is, turn the eyeball on and off so you know photo two is the big white circle. I'm done with the butterfly. Close it. Don't need to save it. I will go to file and open, and now I'm gonna open up the picture of the ducks. And just like I did before, I'm gonna take my move tool, the entire image, drag it all up, wait a second, and drop them on top of the big white circle. Hover over the line that separates the ducks from that white circle right here. Hold Option key and just move your mouse up and down until you see the clipping group icon. Now I Option click, trap the ducks inside the circle. And obviously we don't want a bunch of headless ducks running around our park. So Command T, transform. I can just move this over so I can see the corner. Drag the corner down a bit, move the photo back in. And that looks good right there. Hit return. I've trapped the photo inside that white circle. Once I'm done with the ducks, I can close them. 
What I would do on your file is save your progress. Keep consistently saving as you go. And now on photo three, this little medium sized circle down here. I can turn off the eyeball so I know that's the one I'm about to deal with. File and open. Take the picture of the lizard. 95% of that is photo I don't even care about. I really want to focus on the lizard, obviously. So I'm going to drag the whole photo up and the whole thing back down onto that white circle. Hold my option key and click right on the line that separates the lizard from the white circle. We'll trap that guy right inside there. Okay, what I want to do now is just make these circles stand out just a little bit more. I want to give them a little bit of a stroke around the edges. So I'm going to come back up to photo one. Remember, that was the white circle that we trapped the butterfly inside of. Okay, if I turn that off, the butterfly has nothing to show up in, so he'll disappear. Okay, on that little white circle, I go to the far right of the layer. Double click. And now I click on the word stroke. Okay, instead of whatever color comes up here, in this case white, I'm going to click on the color, jump out into the photo, and I'm going to steal this gold right from the lettering right there. There we go. Steal the color right off of the sign. I'll click OK. I'll make the size a little bit bigger, maybe around 21 pixels. I'm also going to set an inner shadow. So I'm going to click on the words, inner shadow. I'll set the opacity to about 90%. Set the choke way down to about 10%. And the size to about somewhere around 50 pixels, 49 to 51. Distance will be zero. So that creates a nice little inset shadow around the inner edges of the circle. Kind of like pushing the photo down into a little container. I think that looks cool right there. So multiply, it's black. Let's go with black, there we go. Black, multiply, 90%. The distance is zero. Choke is 10. Size is about 50. And I'll click OK. Looks pretty cool, stands out. But I want the ducks to match and I want the lizard to match. So again, as I've shown before, if you have an effect on a particular layer, hover over the word effects, hold your option key for a copy and drag the effects to photo two. When you let go of the mouse first, you will copy that effect. Put your cursor on the word effects, hold your option key for a copy, and copy the effects to photo three. You let go of the mouse first, and now we have that consistent look in our layout. Now, like I mentioned before, if you don't need to look at all the effects, you can just close up these little triangles. No need to make your layers panel longer and longer. And what I want to do is emphasize the bottom layer. Okay, I want people to really appreciate this sign. It looks very dried out, very weathered. Um, I want people to think we really take care of our nature center, even though this would be false advertising because when they show up, they're going to see a dried out sign. But I want them to think we care about our signs. Okay, so on this background layer, if I'm not sure what I'm going to do, I'm kind of experimenting. I don't want to do it on my master copy of that photo. I'm going to hit Command J. I want to do it on a copy. Always. That way if I screw up, I can throw away the copy. I haven't ruined the original. So there's a lot of color in here. I'm going to go to Image Menu, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. And what I'm going to do is use this little hand tool right here. It's called your Target adjustment tool. Okay, what you do is you click that and instead of choosing a color from the list, you physically choose the color in the photo. So I'm going to put it right on this reddish brown, click and drag to the right. 
you can see if I go too far, I'm really intensifying the saturation of the red. So I'm going to bring out a little more varnish in that sign right there. That looks good. I'm going to go up into the greens and yellows of the tree, click and drag those to the right. You can see what that does to the trees right there. Let's make them a little more green, like we watered them a little better. Okay, and that just adds a little more saturation to the photo. If it's too much, just target the reds and drag them back to the left a little bit, whatever you want. But I like that right there. Click OK. And now we've got a nice nature center ad to promote the wildlife that you would see at that nature center. Now, this is the um, El Dorado nature center. So if you're thinking this is kind of fun, you'll probably see one butterfly. You're probably going to see three or four ducks and you'll see about a thousand lizards. But, um, you know, we don't want people to know that. We just want them to come over to the nature center and they'll figure that out for themselves. But this is our nice advertisement using clipping groups so we don't delete our photos. You drag the whole photo in and you clip it. Great way to save time in your compositions. If you're in this class, save it. You're just going to do the same thing I did. That's fine. Save it as Nature Center to turn it in. Show me you know how to use clipping groups. And we're good.